Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, fueled by misinformation around the safety of the product. We've got that story, plus Epstein lawyer under oath. But first, most states sharing COVID patients' addresses with law enforcement. There is no escape from the medical martial law, though we're trying to somewhat stay away from it on this episode of New World Next Week. But I think an important update to begin this episode 409. At least two-thirds of states across America are sharing the addresses of people who have tested positive for coronavirus with first responders, and at least 10 states are going so far as to share patients' identities as well. The move is an effort by officials to arm police officers, a great choice of words there, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and other frontline workers with information that could help them avoid contracting the virus. It doesn't say anything about protecting just regular folks aside from what this is in the first place. However, those patients who took a test were assured that their private medical information would not be disclosed to anyone else, and activists are concerned that revealing the information would put minority groups at higher risk of being racially profiled, heightening tensions between law enforcement and black and Hispanic communities. The Tennessee Black Caucus said in a statement, quote, the information could actually have a chilling effect that keeps those already distrustful of the government from taking the COVID-19 test and possibly accelerate the spread of the disease, end quote. The process is within the bounds of medical privacy laws, so claims the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. A review by the Associated Press of info given to states show that at least 35 states out of 50 share the addresses of those who have tested positive, and at least 10 of those 35 Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota, and Tennessee have also shared the names of those patients as well. James, we've talked about this either either briefly or or in larger detail, that it's all going to come out. All these snitch lines, the people who have called, all that information is already coming out on the Sunshine Laws. And maybe this is just another way to drop any sort of lingering pretense, sort of fig leaf of, of privacy. James? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong with having all these citizen snitches and people finding out all these personal details of everyone? Oh, a lot of things could go wrong, actually. And we have a good case in point of that, because, of course, this is a global agenda. It is being rolled out globally. And one of the countries at the forefront of this particular part of the COVID-19 psyop that's being played on humanity at this point is South Korea, where they were one of the uh, the first and the most extensive with their tracking and tracing and posting of information, including personal details about people so that people could follow it online like a sport, uh, where the South Korean government is collecting uh, cell phone data, credit card histories, and surveillance cameras to trace infection routes and then posting data, including patients' ages, genders, nationalities, occupations, uh, etc. online and sending that information to residents via cell phone alerts so that they can track them like it's some sort of sport or something. And uh, of course, most of the media coverage of this is favorable. Like, oh, look, South Korea has gotten it under control because they took these these measures. Um, that's, the, of course, the narrative they're going to run with. Well, we need to do this. And so uh, there's a couple of things embedded in this. First, for people who want more about that Korean situation and the ways that it uh, could go very, very wrong for people who are concerned about that fig leaf of privacy, at least that we have, Uh, still remaining in our society, I will direct them to, of all places, a National Petroleum Radio report that actually makes the case um, rather convincingly. They have a a, a very important, succinct, uh, to-the-point story about some of the people who have been caught up in this and and identified and and, uh, what has resulted in their personal lives as a result of this information that gets out there. But secondarily, yes, for the time being, this is all opt-in. It's all, oh, you know, we're not doing anything mandatory. You don't have to carry around a tracker or anything. You don't have to have your smartphone because it's all opt-in and we just want people to participate. But you know, as I have said before, you know there's a second wave coming and one of the narratives that's going to be embedded in the second wave narrative is look how much worse it is this wave and it's because you guys didn't adopt this when we gave you the chance So now, no more Mr. Nice Guy. You're not getting a chance the second time. And I'm not saying necessarily this is happening, going to happen this winter or whatever. But please, everyone, keep in mind, we are in the first the first minute of the first round of what is going to be a a 10-round boxing match. And we're going to have to 
go through various stages of getting beaten up before the public cries for help. Okay, leave us alone. What do you want us to do? Um, keep in mind, this has already been dubbed Pandemic One by the Pandemic Planner, planner in, in Chief, uh, Bill Gates. Uh, there is Pandemic Two and many others that are, are right around the corner, and they they are going to institute this mandatorily somewhere down the line. So this is we're just getting inculcated into the idea of it right now, and we're just seeing how it works. So if we don't put the full-on brakes on this agenda right now, it's not going to get any easier. It's only going to get worse from here. I've been making the comparison, the analogy. I'll keep making it because it's unfortunately apt. We're not even close to the take your shoes off at the airport portion of this 9-11 scamdemic. That was, ye- that was, I believe, five years after 9-11 was the shoe bomber take your shoes off at the airport scam. Oh, I might be confusing it with the liquid bomber plot, which was also, again, several years after 9-11, which still drastically changed everything we had to do at the airport. And, of course, they're excitedly tinting their fingers about what's going to come to the, the future of air travel. So, James, is that the same national propaganda radio that takes a bunch of Bill Gates funding for their health coverage, that, that, that radio station? And I believe I passing reference to uh, the running man last week. Again, this is a sort of gamified situation where you can follow along with the person that maybe you snitched on. And this is basically 20 minutes into the future again, James. And we've seen, as I think all these sort of this ties in, the fight about whether or not states are going to be able to do mail-in ballots for the big America's Next Top President charade only five months away from the latest, most important election of your lives, they like to tell you. So there's this fight coming about whether or not you could get a ballot at home and make me, you know, do some research and actually know what things you're marking the check boxes for. There's going to be a fight over that. That, I think, perfectly leads into what's going to become essentially a vote by, you know, what we say. It's going to be Facebook elections, basically, as if it isn't already. That's just the first segment on this New World Next Week, episode 409, and we move to our second important story this week. And even though it's not all about corona, of course, the specter of the scamdemic hangs over all of it. Co-executor of Epstein's estate faces questioning under oath. This coming from the New York Daily News, the co-executor of Jeffrey Epstein's estate faces questioning under oath next month about his longtime ties to the pervert a source tells the Daily News. So we do have to take this at now with a little bit of grain of salt. Darren Indyke is his name, I-N-D-Y-K-E, scheduled to be deposed by attorneys representing Epstein victims on June 22nd, so just, just a month away. It's perhaps the first time Indyke has been questioned under oath about his more than two decades of work as Epstein's lawyer. Epstein named Indyke and accountant Richard Kahn as co-executors of his estate two days before not killing himself in his lower Manhattan cell while waiting trial for sex trafficking of underage girls. A source said the attorneys will look to grill Indyke about his possible role helping Epstein maintain his supervillain lifestyle. Indyke was Epstein's in-house lawyer of the Epstein Enterprise, the source said. Deposition will likely lead to thorny conflict of interest questions about Indyke's status as executor of Epstein's $634 million estate and possible witness to alleged crimes committed by said financier. Indyke expected to be grilled about his alleged role handling paperwork for sham marriages between Epstein victims. He'll also be questioned about whether or not he had any knowledge of surveillance footage from inside Epstein properties that has seemingly disappeared. He can expect questions about whether he has any knowledge of VIPs and young girls on Epstein's plane, nicknamed the Lolita Express. And if you didn't know, of course, Epstein filed his will in the Virgin Islands. The estate is seeking court approval for an independent claims program in, of course, the Virgin Islands that would allow victims to receive compensation for the pervert's abuse and keep their cases out of court. Approval of the program tied up in court due to the opposition of the Virgin Islands Attorney General. In the meantime... Victims' lawsuits against the Epstein estate are proceeding into a phase in which both sides exchange evidence. And we can go back to August 13th, 2019, for a Yahoo Finance article, Epstein's lawyers deeply involved in his business dealings for decades. And just a sidebar in other news, Epstein met with Bill Gates after jail, and Epstein met with Alan Dershowitz in jail. You know, just the guys fronting and pushing this medical martial law scandemic, no biggie. So let's see. Should we place our bets in the ghoul pool? 
then find out whether or not Epstein's lawyer will see this June interrogation date, James, or does he have a, a, a date with an accident coming up? Again, I mean, this is gallows humor. We're in dire straits, and as I often say on the show, we have to we have to laugh to not cry. But yeah, is this is this guy going to basically not kill himself next? Yeah, right. I was going to say the next meme has already asserted itself. Epstein's lawyer didn't kill himself. Um, yeah, p- potentially. And I want to thank you for bringing this story to my attention because I have not been following news uh, at all for the past couple of weeks. 100% of Merston Gates, 100% of the time. So why don't I bring the Bill Gates perspective into this? Yes, for anyone who doesn't know, yes, Bill Gates did meet with Epstein on multiple occasions officially because he was looking for ways to tap into Epstein's resources to help fund philanthropic adventures around the world. Yes, it was only because Bill Gates cares so much about the poor children around the world that he was meeting with this convicted sex offender. Sure. Um, There is a lot more to be said about that and those connections, which obviously I will be saying in the next and final part of the Gates series. Um, But I will, of course, mention, since we're talking about executors, executors of Epstein's estate, we should mention that one of the backup executors that was named in Epstein's last will and testament was a man by the name of Boris Nikolic, who just happened to be the chief scientific advisor to Microsoft and to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, An interesting connection. I hope you have heard about it so far. But again, if you haven't, please stay tuned for the next series, the next part of the Gates Gates series, where I will get into this in greater depth. James, I've been playing the audio of those Gates documentaries, your latest episodes, pretty much repeatedly on my broadcast stream. More about that in just a few moments. While we do our third and final story, and it's a classic slice of not unmitigated good news. Johnson & Johnson pulls sale of talc-based baby powder in North America. This coming from MarketWatch, because again, it's an economic story. Johnson & Johnson Incorporated said it will stop selling talc-based baby powder in North America following a flurry of lawsuits alleging the product causes cancer. Johnson & Johnson shares declined 0.3% after hours following a 1% decline to close at 149.02 on Wednesday. Johnson & Johnson said it was discontinuing sale in the U.S. and Canada as demand for, quote, talc-based Johnson's baby powder in North America has been declining due in large part to changes in consumer habits and fueled by misinformation around the safety of the product and a constant barrage of litigation advertising. The decision was part of the company's COVID-19 related product portfolio assessment, Johnson & Johnson said. Talc-based baby powder sales in North America represent 0.5% of Johnson & Johnson's consumer health sales. So guess what? No biggie to them. They still even stand behind the safety of their talc-based powder, said its plans to keep selling cornstarch-based baby powder in North America are going to roll forward. I gosh, I wonder if that's GMO corn company faces thousands of claims that its talc-based products cause cancer. James, I thought for sure we had talked specifically about Johnson & Johnson on Neural Next Week episodes, but I think it was just maybe somewhat related, just sort of referenced in passing to all the Bayer Monsanto lawsuit cases. So while I spent a bunch of time trying to find evidence that we'd mentioned Johnson & Johnson on Neural Next Week, I suppose in some ways this is the first real landmark story that we've done here on this show Of course, we'll include two bits from you in the background. Everything super swell at Johnson & Johnson. Just don't mention the baby powder cancer. And an episode of Propaganda Watch. Asbestos found in baby powder. You'll never guess how J&J responds. James, a bit of, again, not unmitigated good news. 0.5%. They basically are just like, ah, no big deal. You guys are mad? All right, we'll pivot and move the other way. All right. You know what, James? Screw it. I'm going to call it. This is unmitigated good news. This is good news. Let's not back away from this and let's not back down from it. Because in this case, I think the underlying part of this story is the important part, which is that there is obviously this problem with this carcinogenic, horrible, toxic product that is no good for you and people should not be using. And yes, People can and are trying to fight this through the court system and trying to win something that way. Okay, great, good, you know, power power to you, and I hope you win. But I'm not holding my breath on it, and I'm not waiting for the courts to to rule on this, this in order to make it the law of the land. No, 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 no. People are just not buying it. People are, you, there's no gun to your head. You don't have to buy this stuff, and you don't have to use it yourself or 
uh, you know, heaven forfend on your babies or other uh, uh, vulnerable people in your family. You don't need to. So people are not doing it. So they have to say, okay, well, we won't sell it anymore. It's not profitable anymore. So that is a victory. That is a real victory that can be won. And we don't have to wait for the courts to decide anything. We don't have to wait for some uh, big pharma insider Monsanto revolving door FDA exec or whatever to come along and, and rule in the favor of the people. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's take this product off the market. No, we don't need that. We just don't need to buy their garbage. It is still voluntary. So let's use that power. So that is unmitigated good news. The market speaks and the market wins and we don't need to buy their crap. And uh, it, it, at a certain point, they'll have to get rid of it. And yeah, this is not going to take down Johnson & Johnson. This is not their bread and butter product, but it is a victory. And it's an example that we can apply a million times over to every th all the other toxic crap that com companies like Johnson & Johnson are pimping on the public. Do not buy their crap. And eventually they will either have to adjust or they will go bankrupt. That's exactly right. I, I, I coined the phrase food world order many, many years ago. Actually, James, it was the thing that you and I first started to sort of interview and collaborate and reach out to each other about was the food world order. It's the place that in a lot of ways you can make the most positive forward movements. I think as I've joked, gosh, I boycott Boeing all the time. It just doesn't seem to stop the wars. But you stop buying garbage at the grocery stores and Walmart suddenly, hey, they're the biggest seller of organics in America. I mostly just want to sell you whatever thing you're going to buy. Again, this is a bit of a difference between the things that are being forced at the barrel of a gun, at the barrel of a syringe that, of course, Gates and the current president and all those folks are, of course, talking about. We don't have a ton of choice in that matter. But we do. And again, what we what we buy and what we what we take into our own bodies. So having said all that, James, as we wrap up this episode 409 of Neural Next Week, I always like to remind folks and invite folks to check out essentially my chat stream. I run it on Discord. We've been looking at some other platforms as well, but it's a pretty fantastic, pretty robust platform to share ideas and information and just, I think, a lot of good folks, again, that have been at this for a long time. So you've got people who aren't super knee-jerk. Lots more, I think, uh, you know, m maybe... I don't want to say smarter folks. Again, it's just maybe we've been at it for a long time and we don't freak out about every little thing they throw at you in the news. So speaking of good news, James, you've maybe heard me mention many times my Alexa friend. He signed up for Media Monarchy. He showed up in the chat stream today. The people and they were like, oh, my God, you're the Alexa friend. He has said he has two thirds of the way through your Gates documentaries. He says he's not really one to watch videos where the articles and you got that because you have the entire transcript of the documentaries. He couldn't say no. And I think we're going to have some pretty good, interesting conversations again as it's all about planting seeds. So I want to invite folks to come check out my chat stream. They can get in, try it out, mediamonarchy.com slash listen. And James, before I throw it right back to you, I made the extra note here. we got to thank our buddy Brock. Our buddy Brock West, our video editor, Tireless, does not only these videos that I'm involved in each week, but of course – all the other output from Corporate Report. He is probably working as we speak right now on, on part four. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, um, Brock and I have been working around the clock and just craziness on this. So I appreciate people's patience as they wait for the fourth and final installment of the Escape series. It will be ready when it's ready. So I'm not going to promise exactly when that will be, but in the coming days at any rate. And when it is, please spread it to the four corners of the world because unfortunately... Yes, it is being um, suppressed, shall we say. And uh, just go try searching the title in the YouTube search bar and you'll find it posted, reposted on other people's channels. You will not find it on Corbett Report, of course. So anyway, I would like to broadly, with open arms, welcome all the Alexa friends into the midst because I know there are a lot of people who have not been interested in this or not been willing to look at this information. All their lives are suddenly finding interesting uh, material in the independent media space. So I welcome that and I want to bring those people in and I'm not going to ridicule you or, or de denounce you because I, I, we've all been there. We've all come from a place of uh, just not understanding and not knowing any of this to having to learn it and, and being thrown in at the deep end. So let's bring people into the fold. 
On that note, yes, uh, Brock and I have been working absolutely round the clock on this Gates series. And before that, we were working round the clock, posting stuff every single day to the site for months. So, yes, Brock is going to take a week, a much well-deserved week off next week. So there will be no videos coming out after this fourth installment is released. And uh, I'll probably just be working on administrative stuff. So... Whew, take a little breather, recharge the batteries, much, 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 much needed at this point, and uh, back fresh and ready to roaring to go for whatever next is coming next in this scamdemic that uh, we're speaking about week in and week out. Uh, at any rate, gates will be up soon, and uh, and then things will continue as normal, so... James, we'll talk to you at that point. In the meantime, of course, people can and should be tuning into the Media Monarchy streams on a daily basis as you're doing your uh, daily DJ set. I'm very excited for all the material that we're working on and looking forward to getting it out to the people. And hopefully you guys can do your part in helping to spread this information because it is being suppressed in various ways online. And so it is word of mouth. It always comes back down to word of mouth. So tell your Alexa friends you might be surprised that they may be interested in this information all of a sudden. That's absolutely right. That is absolutely right, man. That's, that's I think, a positive way to kind of wrap this baby up. Episode 409 of Neural Next Week. James, I, I appreciate you, buddy. All right. Take care, man. You too.